Could you both tell us about the story? How is it different from the books? Well, the premise is the same. It's about these two wildly imaginative best friends who hypnotize their terrible principal and turn him into their comic book creation, Captain Underpants, the dim-witted and lightly dressed superhero. Yeah, I really, when we started working together, one of the things I told David is I, I don't like it when you read the book and then you go see the movie and it's exactly the same as the books because it feels like there's no surprises and you kind of wonder why, why am I even here? This is boring. So I told David really early on that I wanted him, I, didn't, I wasn't going to look over his shoulder, I wanted him to do whatever he could to bring, the, bring out the best cap, possible Captain Under, Underpants movie and that's exactly what happened. Which was incredibly freeing for all of us, you know, to have uh, have Dave empower us to, to, you know, not be slave to the material, but also really capture the spirit of it. Um, was just a really uh, made it incredibly fun. And Dave, how does it feel to see Captain Underpants finally make its way to the big screen? I am so unbelievably grateful uh, to everyone at DreamWorks, starting with this man here who. <laughs> Who took my silly, <laughs> my silly, silly books and turned them into something so epic? But um, one of the things that I I've noticed this entire weekend, you know, seeing seeing a lot of the people leaving the leaving the screenings and being so happy, and and the parents and the moms and the kids and everybody's so excited. One of the things that that really resonates with me is the amount of love that went into this movie from. Not just you, but the cast, yeah. the animators, the musicians, the writers. They're so everybody put so much of themselves into this film, and it is. I don't. I think I will be <laughs> to, to my dying day. I will be so unbelievably grateful. That's awesome, David. How did you get first involved with the series? I became aware of the books 20 years ago. I happened to stumble into a bookstore and saw the first uh, the first book on the shelf. Picked it up right there and thought this is this is a very funny idea and started leafing through it and then before I knew it I think I'd read about half the book right there in the aisle and thought I wish I came up with this idea myself this is so good um, and then I had your uh, kids of my own years later and um, they read them I read them with them they started reading them on their own when they started getting into reading so when DreamWorks ended up approaching me about the movie I it was like no hesitation I'm in uh, so I, I felt like I really deeply understood the books loved the books, and was a fan. And Dave, what inspired you to create the world of Captain Underpants and its wonderful characters? Um, I was kind of taking my childhood experience and trying to spin it in a positive way. When I was a kid, I had some, some trouble in school. I didn't really fit in in the classroom setting. I had what is now called ADHD, and I have dyslexia, and had a lot of challenges in school. So my teacher was always sending me out in the hallway, and. I was, I was always in trouble with the principal, and it was not a real happy school experience or environment. So Captain Underpants, the book series, is sort of a way to exercise my demons a little bit and turn something that was a little bit painful into something fun and, and enjoyable. What was your greatest experience working with such a talented cast? Uh, every moment with them was, was a a pure joy. Um, they are so, I mean, it's a murder's row of, of comedy greats on this movie, and they're not just great uh, actors and comedians, they're all uh, really terrific writers, too. So we use them in, in very different ways on this movie um, to make the recording sessions not just about getting lines, but like actually workshopping scenes, coming up with the best versions of their characters. Uh, and they came in, saw early screenings of the movie, gave notes, became really more like creative partners on the movie. And I think as a result, they infused their characters with a lot more of, their, of themselves and their, uh, they were really invested in these characters and the movie and, um, and, the, and it's filled with kind of ad-libs and improvisations. And um, so yeah, they were just, I mean, every moment with them was, has been phenomenal. Um, do either of you like to play pranks on your family and friends? <laughs> I haven't done it in a while, but when I was a kid, I was a total prankster. When, my favorite one was, you know, like at, at the sink, you know, they have that, the, that little spray thing where you go Tsh, and you can spray down the dishes. Well, if you take a piece of tape and you can tape the handle down and then you put it back and then the next person who turns on the, the sink, it goes Tsh, all over them and gets them all wet. That's, that works every time. I have, I have young kids. I have a 10-year-old and a 7-year-old, so I'm more the one who gets pranked, typically. <laughs> 
Um, what would you say to parents about this film who are concerned about the potty humor? I think what we did with the movie is, uh, you know, first of all, we set the bar very high in terms of potty humor. So if we went there, it was only because it was really, really funny. Otherwise, the humor really came out of character and, uh, and we found other places to, to really mine for comedy. Um, I, I think even though the books are called Captain Underpants, they're really about the two boys who create him, George and Harold. And, and the key to the success of the books, and I think the movie, is the central relationship between these two boys, which is a creative partnership they have. And that is lovely. I mean, there's such a sweetness and sincerity to that friendship, and it rings true to, to, to my experiences growing up, my friends that I've had that I treasure the most uh, uh, have been kind of creative uh, relationships by nature. So that, to me, is really what the movie's about. Um, and, and the rest of it is kind of like, you know, you take it from the point of view of a fourth grader, you know, it's these kids are, this is kind of where they live. So um, it's very funny to them. And it's uh, ultimately, I think, very funny still to a lot of adults, even though they may not admit it. We just had a screening for, for moms and kids yesterday. And I think the moms were just as happy as the yeah. kids were. They And they were thanking us. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe that. Yeah. They were saying that they thought the, the film was going to inspire their children to pick up a, a video camera and start making their own movies, and they were very happy. There's not much better than sitting in a movie theater with your kids and having your kids just howling with laughter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that's a pretty lovely experience. Yeah. And last question, uh, the power of friendship is central theme in the film. What do you think parents and kids can take away from the movie? Well, I think the, the parents will be very, very happy uh, with the way that George and Harold's, not only their friendship and their loyalty to each other um, stays true to the, the book series, but also they're, they gain a sense of empathy throughout the story. They, they have this relationship with their, their principal and he's really so mean to them at the beginning and they're just trying to stay out of trouble if they can, but by the end of the story they, they develop a, a real sense of caring for him and they become very empathetic and they want to help him out. They, they rec recognize him as, as kind of sad and maybe a little bit lonely and maybe there's something that they can do to, to help him out. Yeah. The, the movie really it, it promotes creativity, I think, in the same way the books do. And that, that friendship, um, it's just, it, it's really lovely to see these two boys create things um, that are tangible, that are accessible to any kid out there. You know, they have a tree house, they have markers, they have pencil crowns, they make stories up and go and sell them to their friends. You know, so it's, I, I think what's really nice is it, it's not promoting an idea of, of creativity. It's actually telling kids, like, you can do this yourselves. Hey, Lisa here. Now, keeping with animation, did you know that the Oscar for Best Animated Feature was first awarded in 2001, with the first winner being Shrek? Now, for a film to be eligible, the animated feature must have a running time of more than 40 minutes in which the characters' performances are created using a frame-by-frame -frame technique. Also, a significant number of the major characters are animated, and the animation must figure in no less than 75% of the running time. Now, keeping with animation and the Oscars, Beauty and the Beast, up and Toy Story 3 are the only animated films to have been nominated for Best Picture Oscar. However, Walt Disney was awarded an honorary Oscar in 1938 for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. What's your favourite animated movie? Let me know in the comments below. Keep up to date on all things animation by subscribing to our channel and clicking on the notification bell. See you next time.